I've been involved in this fascinating search for clues to our past history for uh, all of my adult life. And if I had my time over again, I would dearly like to be privileged to do it again. Professor Philip Tobias conjured up many images. Scientist in white lab coat, tons of books and papers, excavations, ancient skulls and bones, human origin and evolution. Tobias was born in Durban on the 14th of October 1925. Genetic tests traced his ancestry to Middle Eastern Arabs and European Jews. He published his first piece of writing in grade four. I used to read the newspapers when I was three years of age. I don't think I knew what it meant. The words appealed to me and I have a dictionary habit if I'm reading a novel, especially who done it, if there's a word that I'm not familiar with, off I go to my dictionary and look up the meaning. The diabetic-related deaths of Philip Tobias's grandmother and older sister led him to study medicine at Wits University in 1943. He wanted to know why the illness had bypassed his mother and himself. I asked our family doctor, who knows anything about hereditary disease in South Africa? And he said, nobody. And so I was determined to become the first person in the country. At Wits, Tobias obtained five degrees. He also focused on physiology, histology, surgery, genetics and paleoanthropology. He was the first Wits academic to hold three simultaneous professorships in anatomy, human biology and paleoanthropology. But it was fossils that really fascinated him. The well-known leakies of East Africa opened the door to the bones for him in the late 1950s when they asked him to describe all the hominid fossils they'd found, such as the 1960 Homo habilis or handyman skull of the Alduvai Gorge in Tanzania and the 1994 Littlefoot skeleton of Stagfontein near Krugersdorp. Stagfontein and Philip Tobias were synonymous. He first worked there in 1945 when it was just a small hole in the ground. He was responsible for the discovery of about 600 of its ancient fossils and also for the area being declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1999. I believe it is philosophically terribly important that these fossils which we have been excavating in Africa are seen as common human ancestors. Philip Tobias abhorred apartheid. Shortly after the old National Party came into power in 1948, he was elected to lead the non-racial National Union of South African Students. I became involved in student politics in the ideals of brotherhood of people, in the idea that race was irrelevant in matters of the mind and spirit, and I set on foot a very early campaign in 1949 against apartheid in the universities. Following the death and detention of black consciousness leader Steve Biko in 1977, Tobias and a small group of doctors took the Medical and Dental Council to court. They succeeded in getting two of the so-called Biko doctors struck off the medical roll. For democratic South Africa, Tobias negotiated the return of Sarah Bartman's remains from the Museum of Man in France in 2002. Publicly, his work culminated in the fascinating and critically acclaimed six-part SABC TV series called Tobias's Bodies. Tobias asks simple but complex questions. Why are men violent? What makes you black? And are we all Africans? This series is built around the world through my eyes. I have many, many interests. People think of me only as an old fossil, <laughs> but uh, my interests go beyond the study of the past. I've worked on the living peoples of Africa. I'm also interested in uh, the political side of the things. I'm interested in stories on philosophy and history. And the film series tries to show how everything is interlinked. 
Philip Tobias produced over a thousand journal articles, a hundred book chapters, and forty books. His lifelong academic excellence and dedication were honoured worldwide with numerous scholarships, bursaries, fellowships, honorary doctorates, medals, and awards. But not the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine, despite being nominated for it three times. Instead, he received the lucrative Balzan Prize from Switzerland for outstanding achievements in physical anthropology. On the home front, the de Klerk and Mandela governments bestowed the Order of Meritorious Service and the Southern Cross on him. Although Tobias officially retired in 1993, he regarded life without work as the kiss of death. Philip Tobias will be remembered for many things, from his use of belly dancers and bodybuilders in his lectures to his passionate and tireless commitment to reveal Africa's true gift. People often ask, what's Africa given the world? And they say it in a kind of sneering and derogatory way, as if they know the answer, nothing. And there is a, a simple short answer to that. Africa gave the world humanity, and Africa gave the world the first human culture, and that's no small thing. Professor Philip Tobias's funeral service will be held at the Jewish section of the West Park Cemetery on Sunday morning at quarter to 11. I'm Angie Kaplianis in Johannesburg.